Hello everyone, our today's lesson is for World Literature 3 and uh, this is about American realism and I'm going to talk about uh, the adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain and about the main characteristics and features of American realism and this lesson contains three contents that uh, according to your syllabi and uh, please make some notes while I'm talking uh, while I'm explaining the themes symbols characters and also features of realism and also um, analysis of the novel and some quotations because as you see um, every lesson I write just keywords uh, but this lesson I just help I wanted to help you for your exam and that's why I mm, wrote some characteristics of realism uh, not just like keywords just the whole sentences and uh, but the other slides please make some notes uh, for yourself because I will uh, use that information for your exam questions so be careful and let's get started. So the first uh, content is American realism, Mark Twain and his literary activities. So we'll talk about especially the adventures of um, Tom Sawyer. And the second content is the major themes in the adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. And analysis of characters in the adventures of Tom Sawyer is a sec third uh, topic. So uh, let's get started. The first one is about the realism in American literature. So to be able to analyze uh, the adventures of Tom Sawyer and also other novels that are written in realism, you should know about features and characteristics of realism. What is realism? So uh, what's um, the main characteristics of this movement? Uh, so broadly defined as uh, the faithful representation of reality. Uh, realism is a literary technique practiced by many schools of writing. And although strictly speaking uh, realism is a technique, it also denotes a particular kind of subject matter and especially the representation of middle class life. A reaction against uh, romanticism um, and interest in scientific method the systematizing of the study of documentary history and the influence of rational philosophy so all affected the, uh, the rise of realism in American literature. So um, in American literature the term realism encompasses the period of time from the Civil War to the turn of the century. As the United States grew rapidly after the Civil War the increasing rates of democracy and literacy and the rapid growth um, in, uh, in urbanization and expanding uh, population base due to immigration and the relative rise in middle class affluence provided a fertile literature environment for readers interested in understanding these rapid shifts in culture. So, uh, the main characteristics of realism, so here I mean that we have two slides that are full sentences for you, which are, they're containing, I, I think, ten, five, ten, 11. So, 11 um, characteristics we have, so they are not like keywords. They are full sentences that I will use them for your exam questions, for multiple questions. So please be careful and uh, read them attentively and you can make some notes for yourself too. So um, the main characteristic is that uh, realism renders reality closely and in comprehensive detail. And selective presentation of reality with an emphasis on um, uh, at the expense of a well-made plot and uh, it emphasizes accuracy and objectivity and also depicts uh, common everyday heroes uh, so it's not a special um, queens or kings and so on and we use uh, the world um, scientifically 
and focuses on real life situations, renders reality closely, as I said before. And um, so, character is more important than action and plot. Complex ethical choices are often the subject. And characters appear in their real complexity of uh, temperament and motive. They are in explicable relation to nature, to each other, to their social class, and to their own past. And class is important. So the novel has traditionally served the interests and aspirations of an insurgent middle class. Events will usually be plausible. Realistic novels avoid the sensational, dramatic elements of naturalistic novels and romances. And diction is natural vernacular, not heightened or poetic. Tone may be comic, satiric, or matter-of-fact. And objectivity in a presentation becomes increasingly important. Overt authorial uh, comments or instructions diminish as the century progresses. An interior of psychological realism, a variant form. So you see here 11 main characteristics of realism and learn them by heart. And so what about uh, um, realist writers? Um, but I would like to say, I just forgot about... No, no, sorry. Okay, so about the uh, realist uh, writers, also I chose just five main characteristics of uh, realist writers. So uh, they try to use, um, to represent the culture and lifestyle of people accurately and they uh, address themes of uh, socio-economic conflict and they narrate their novels from an objective, unbased perspective. And um, uh, realist writers became masters at psychological characterization. You can uh, you can be aware of it uh, with reading Tom Sawyer. And the descriptions of everyday life in realistic settings and dialogue that captures the idioms of natural human speech. So, the main uh, basic difference between realism and sentimentalism, uh, why I chose this uh, slide, because sometimes students um, can, cannot distinguish what is sentimentalism and realism. Sometimes they say that it's the same, they are uh, concerning the same features, but it's not the same. In realism, the redemption of the individual lay within the social world. But in sentimentalism, the redemption of the social world lay with the, oh, sorry, I didn't write it, with the individual, I have to write here, so I will, just right now, I will change it, individual, sorry for that, okay, it's just a mechanical mistake, <laughs> sorry, so, that's the main difference between uh, realism and sentimentalism because um, so sentiment sense it's the it's from the word of sense uh, but realism is the word of real even you you can see it from the core of the word it's quite different things and uh, so main representatives of realism uh, I just chose some of the representatives, not all of them. Mark Twain, William Faulkner, Henry James, John Steinbeck, Kate Chopin, O. Henry, O. Henry, with a um, little letter, sorry for that, Jack London. But today we will talk about Mark Twain. Uh, he was known by his pen name Mark Twain. He was an American writer, humorist, entrepreneur, uh, publisher and also lecturer. And he was lauded as the greatest humorist in the United States, has produced, and will um, and um, ma um, main uh, major uh, representatives of the realism that William Faulkner called him the father of American literature. His novels include The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and its sequel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The later uh, called um, the American, the great American novel. 
So Mark Twain was a natural born uh, storyteller who was the first writer to recognize um, that art could be created out of American language. And so and here we have just one uh, writing advice I chose it uh, I searched it on you uh, on Google and I found it it was really uh, interesting and I wanted to share it with you um, whatever you have lived you can write by hard work a genuine apprenticeship you can learn to write well but what you have not lived you cannot write you can only pretend to write it so this uh, this advice just this quote can show us that he was real realist writer so uh, and it, it means that you can see some autobiographical uh, features in his novels because he wrote what he lived and the adventures of Tom Sawyer is written in it was written in 18. 76. It's uh, about a young boy growing up along the Mississippi River. It's set in the uh, 1840s in the fictional town of St. Petersburg, inspired by Hannibal, uh, where Twain lived as a boy. So you can see here autobiographical feature. In the novel, Tom Sawyer has several adventures, often with his friend Huckleberry Finn, and originally a commercial failure. The book ended up um, being the best selling of any of Twain's works during his lifetime. Though uh, overshadowed by its sequel, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, the book is considered by many to be a masterpiece of American literature and was one of the first novels to be written on a typewriter. So, what are the major themes of this novel? The first theme is about the sentimentality and uh, real realism, or reality, you can say. So, um, in writing about the village of St. Petersburg, Missouri, Twain was describing a contem contemporary Southern American village to his original readers. Ra and rather than uh, glamorizing his subject matter by writing about a more well-known location or glamorous characters, he aimed towards realism in describing the daily lives of uh, average people living on the Mississippi River, people in whom his readers might recognize themselves. And his preface uh, explains that much of the book is based on his own experiences growing up, implying that little has been reinvented. Yet, even as he sets out to tell the stories of ordinary villagers with beliefs and values that represent those uh, of many uh, mid-19th century Americans, Twain adds um, embellishments to his depiction, pay playing up uh, the um, quaintness of village life. And a more realistic view of a community with stress, for example, unresolved injustice, the disparity between rich and poor, or the life of a slave in St. Petersburg, as Twain will do in another novel, in Adventures of uh, Huckleberry Finn. And there are elements of realism in the Adventures of Tom Sawyer, for example, Twain's uh, descriptions of Huck's uh, life as a homeless boy who is looked down upon by his elders. Even so, as a novel consisting of many short stories with happy endings, The Adventures of uh, Tom Sawyer is largely a sentimental portrait of Mississippi Village and, um, and uh, uh, offering St. Petersburg as Twain uh, would like to remember it. The, Twain uh, does his... Um, purposefully to show the reader how building a community involves a sense of optimism. And Twain structures the end of the book like a romantic tale, with Tom and Huck actually discovering treasure in a haunted house, a completely uh, improbable plot twist. Uh, he implicates the reader in enjoying fanciful stories more than realistic ones. And the other theme is freedom through social exclusion. 
So here, St. Petersburg is an insular community in which outsiders are easily identified. The most notable local outsiders include Hawk Finn, who fends for himself outside of any family uh, because his father is a drunkard, Muff Potter, also a drunk, and Injun Joe, a, a male volunt half breed. So, uh, despite the community's clear separation of outsiders from insiders, however, it seems to have a strong impulse toward inclusiveness. The community tolerates the drunkenness uh, of a harmless rascal uh, like Muff Potter and Hog is more or less protected even though uh, he exists on the fringe of society. Tom, too, is an orphan uh, who has been taken in by Aunt uh, Polly out of love and filial responsibility. Injun Joe is the only resident of St. Petersburg who is completely excluded from the community. Only after Injun Joe's death um, are the townspeople able to transform him through their manipulation of his memory into a tolerable part of St. Petersburg society. So uh, the third theme is boyhood, rebellion and growing up. Tom Sawyer is uh, the embodiment of boyhood rebellion. He is always disappointing the adults who surround him by breaking rules, fighting with other boys, uh, failing to perform his chorus, and uh, piping, stealing sweet treats from his Aunt Polly's closet, and so on. So, yet Twain's stories uh, of Tom's uh, misdeeds are humorous and affectionate, rather than judgmental uh, moral lessons. Tom's, um, uh, in fact, uh, often bring delight and even predictably uh, insight into a situation with the boys' uh, interactions as a gang, uh, often satirically mirroring the behaviors of adults in society. Tom's rebellion earns him the admiration of the other boys in town who uh, misbehave to lesser degrees. And Huckleberry Finn is the only boy who is wilder than Tom. With the village drunkard as his single parent, Huck lives um, an unsupervised uh, life that is very other boy's dream. He never goes to school or church, he smokes, he wears whatever he wants, and he sleeps outdoors each night. Rebellion is a way for boys to bond to the exclusion of a few well-behaved boys, such as Sid, and girls who are more reserved than boys. And um, Breaking rules is considered unacceptable and antisocial for adults, and accordingly the murderer Injun Joe and drunkard Muff Potter are outcasts. Though uh, Tom's um, mischievous uh, nature is the source of the novel's many humorous anecdotes, the overall arc of the novel charts Tom's uh, maturation into adulthood as he leaves behind his boyish ways to become a responsible member of society. And Tom realizes that uh, his actions can have serious consequences and he makes several moral empathetic decisions over the second half of the novel, including testifying against Injun Joe and protecting Becky Thatcher uh, from being whipped by their teacher. Additionally, Tom makes three journeys that involve his maturation. When he runs away with uh, Harper and Huck uh, to Jackson's Island, he realizes that he misses the company of his family and society. In the several days he spent lost in the cave with uh, Becky Thatcher, he develops an understanding of mature romantic love that involves uh, caring for another and that proves more fulfilling than simply courting girls for reasons of personal vanity. Finally, after Tom and Huck hunt down the treasure, Tom adopts the respect for Wells and stated that the adults of St. Petersburg hold, and no longer disdains wearing suits and other respectable habits. 
While Twain's uh, novel catalogues Tom's progression towards adulthood, the author doesn't fully embrace the change in attitudes this transition involves, as his portrayal of Huck exemplifies. Huck also matters uh, considerable uh, over the novel, and he deforms the most heroic act of all in saving the window Douglas life. Yet Huck continues to avoid the properties of society, having manners and attending church, for example, even after he has gained uh, the approval of St. Peter's citizens. He prefers to exist uh, as an independent character on the fringe of society, avoiding the uh, hypocrisies that Twain has satires throughout the novel. At the novel's end, Huck and Tom represent different aspects of adulthood, but uh, they continue to bond through their boyish fantasies, and this capacity for friendship is a characteristic of boyhood that Twain would have his adult readers see as true wisdom. And the other theme is superstition, fantasy, and escape. From the first moment of the novel, Tom is on the run, hiding out from Aunt Polly with stolen jam smeared across his face in her closet. In the face of constant scolding and ever boring work, Tom uh, repeatedly managed to escape. He plays hooky uh, whenever uh, possible and leaves Aunt po uh, Polly's house, typically to return only after his bedtime. He also metaphorically escapes from the boring routines and rules of daily life in St. Petersburg through fantasy, reimagining the world of entertain himself. This might involve play acting with other boys or exaggerating his own achievements. He collects superstitious uh, beliefs and tokens, typically everyday cost of objects reinvented, with which to flavor his tall tales. Tom draws from book, uh, books um, his read about Robin Hood, pirates and other adventurers to imagine himself as the hero of a romantic tale and thereby view his everyday woes uh, in a more glamorous life. His um, maturation over the course of the novel, however, largely involves his learning to differentiate this romantic world from reality. He begins to develop this ability when he runs away with Huck Finn and uh, Joe Harper to Jackson Island and his first real physical escape from St. Petersburg. The boys create an alternate reality on the island uh, with new names and histories for each of them. Their island adventure reveals the fun to be had in escaping through rule breaking as the boys leave the uh, strictures of society behind altogether, uh, parading around necked and even abandoning their families by allowing them to believe they are drowned. They learn, however, that no escape is permanent, feeling homesick rather than uh, courageous on the island, only upon returning to the warm embrace of the villagers who thought them dead to uh, do the boys uh, come to feel heroic. At the novel's end, Tom no longer feels the same uh, longing uh, to escape, um, and even... Um, uh, chastises Huck for running away from the window Douglas' home, insisting that he return there if he wanted to join Tom's new gang. Tom has matured uh, into an adult who, like the rest of his community, takes pride in his uh, new wealth and status, and uh, his clever ability to manipulate others will now uh, serve him as uh, he assumes a leadership position as an adult in St. Petersburg. So, uh, the adults of St. Petersburg are themselves um, skeptical to flights of fancy, consider the minister's extraordinary descriptions of the apocalypse in his church sermon. And Twain's uh, depiction of Tom's playful games are delightful to read over 
the course of the novel, and while he must gain a more realistic view of life as an adult, Twain suggests fantasy provides a way for people to handle the harshness of reality. And the fifth um, theme is the hypocrisy of adult society. The adults of uh, quaint uh, St. Petersburg see themselves as a low um, abiding, church going, family based group that must police its children. And the most respected figure in the novel is Judge Thatcher, who is in charge of uh, administering the law. Virtually every villager shows up to church on Sunday, so that community is formed through an agreed upon set of moral values. The education of the village children consists largely of learning to follow inflexible rules that are intended to protect these values. Uh, the adventures of Tom and his friends often reveal gaps in the adults' logic and inconsistencies in their behavior, with the adults saying one thing but acting otherwise. For example, Aunt Polly tries to force herself to consistently punish the Tom for his rule-breaking, but she often compromises uh, herself by administrating a lesser punishment, such as tapping him on the head with her uh, thimble, and when she had originally threatened to whip him with her switch. And while Tom is often punished for being uh, untrue to his word, Aunt Polly um, is not, but remains a moral authority. And Twain uses the playful games and interactions of children to also humorously reflect hypocrisy on the broader scale of 19th century American society and its religion and temperance movement, medical beliefs and social snobbery. And... Um, so temperance, uh, he's motivated by the social status he will gain in wearing a fancy sash rather than any conviction about the ills of uh, substance abuse. And um, even if uh, Twain is cutting in his dismissive attitude toward abstract social causes that involve hypocrisy, he sees it as an inevitable and uh, condonable aspect of life in a community. And um, the other, other two um, main uh, themes here is crime and trading. So there are also, uh, sorry, sorry for pausing. So we're talking about uh, themes. Uh, the last two themes we had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yes, crime and trading. So, the many crimes committed in the novel range from minor childhood uh, transgressions to capital offenses, from playing hooky to murder. The games the boys prefer center on uh, crime as well, giving them a chance to explore the boldness and heroism involved in breaking social expectations without actually threatening the social order. The boys want to be pirates, robbers and murderers even though they feel remorse when they actually commit the minor crime of stealing bacon. The two scenes in which Tom plays Robin Hood, who, uh, in stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, is both a criminal and a hero, are emblematic of how Tom associates crime with defending values and even uh, altering the structure of society. And the last theme is about trading. The children in the novel maintain an elaborate uh, miniature uh, economy in which they constantly trade amongst themselves treasures that would be junk to adults. These exchanges uh, replicate the commercial relationships in which the children will have to engage when they get older. Many of the uh, complications that money creates appear in their exchanges. Tom uh, swindles his friends out of all their favorite objects through a kind of false advertising when 
he sells them the opportunity to whitewash the fence. And he uh, then uses his newly acquired wealth to buy power and prestige at Sunday school, rewards that should be earned rather than bought. When Tom and Joe fight over the tick uh, in class, uh, we see a case in which a disagreement leads the boys, who have been sharing quite civilly, to revert to a quarrel over ownership. And uh, so we talked about themes of um, the themes of this novel, and now um, we should talk about the characters. So as you see here, I just chose uh, four four of the main characters. Of course, they have um, many characters here, but I uh, every time I just chose the protagonist. Firstly, so he is Tom Sawyer. Uh, he is the novel's hero. Uh, Tom is a badly behaved orphan with an attention-getting streak and a heart of gold. He's a clever uh, trickster, leading the boys of the village in various adventures and a dreamer with uh, grandiose visions for himself. And his misdeeds are never uh, malicious, and by the novel's end, he proves himself capable of major decision, making an empathy, uh, with a um, commitment uh, to being a responsible community member. So, when the novel begins, uh, we see that uh, Tom is a, a mischievous child who envies Huck. Uh, Huck Finn's a lazy lifestyle and freedom. As Tom's adventures proceed, however, critical moments uh, show Tom moving away from his childhood concerns and making major responsible decisions. So these moments include Tom's uh, testimony at uh, Muff Potter's trial, his saving of Becky from punishment and his heroic navigation out of the cave. By the end of the novel, Tom is uh, coaxing Huck into staying at the window, Douglas, urging his friend to accept tight collars, Sunday school, and good table manners. He's no longer a disobedient character, undermining um, the adult order, but a defender of respectability and responsibility. In the end, growing up for Tom means uh, embracing social custom and sacrificing the freedoms of childhood. And the second main character is Huckleberry Finn. Uh, he uh, became the ma major character, the protagonist, for the second novel by Mark Twain, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. As the son of the town drunkard, Huck is virtually orphaned. He is looked down uh, upon by the adults of St. Petersburg, but is uh, deeply admired by the local boys for living as he wants to, not bathing, sleeping outdoors, smoking, never attending school, and so on. He bonds with Tom uh, through their mutual superstitions. Like Tom, he matures morally over the uh, course of the novel, and uh, so uh, to different uh, ends. Um, while Tom becomes a responsible uh, community member, Hug is more very of society's hypocrisy and desires of independence from it. And uh, through Huck, uh, Twain weighs uh, the costs and benefits of uh, living in a society uh, against those of uh, living independently of society. For most of the novel, adult uh, society uh, disapproves of Huck. But because Twain renders Huck such a likable boy, the adults' disapproval of Huck generally alienates us from them and not from Huck himself. After Huck saves uh, the widow um, Douglas and gets rich, the scale tips in the direction of living in society. But Huck, unlike Tom, isn't uh, convinced that the exchange of freedom for stability is worth it. He has a little use of, uh, uh, for the money he has found and is quite devoted to his role 
uh, independent lifestyle. When the novel ends, Huck Like Tom is still at work uh, in progress and we aren't sure whether the widow Douglas attempts to civilize him will succeed or not. And the third character is Injun Joe, the novel's villain. Uh, Joe is an uh, antisocial adult, motivated by revenge and ruthless in exacting um, it. Uh, he brings both realism and romanticism to the novel. On the one hand, his behavior forces Tom and his friends to confront injustice and criminality. On the other hand, his fantastic escapes and discovery of treasure serve as plot devices that move the novel along as a page-turning adventure story. He is also half Native American and has faced discrimination in society as a result. Even though um, uh, Twain's depiction of him is uh, unsympathetic, uh, though his appearance changes when he disguises himself as a deaf and mute Spaniard, in Jun Jo uh, undergoes no real character development over the course of the novel. He, he never seems to repent for his crimes or change his uh, spiteful outlook. His reappearances in different parts of the novel help to provide a thread of continuity as they bring the murder case plot the treasure hunt plot and the adventures in the cave plots uh, together into a single narrative. Joe's uh, presence also adds suspense to the novel because we have very little sense of whether Tom and Huck's constant fear uh, that Joe will hurt them has any basis in reality. And the last character is Becky uh, Thatcher. Um, so Tom uh, develops a crush on Becky as a new blonde in town, and the novel charts the development of their relationship into a major affection for one another after much tit for tat and pettiness. As the daughter of Judge Thatcher, Becky is a privileged girl, prissy and slightly spoiled, a versy challenger to Tom when it comes to um, conniving to get her way. And uh, the other slide is about the symbols that uh, I have cho chosen five symbols here. The village, firstly. So, St. Petersburg uh, typifies small town uh, America in the 19th century. Tom reaches maturity over the course of the novel in realizing that he must act as a responsible member of this community rather than rebelling against its conventions. While Twain depicts the village as an ultimately um, benevolent uh, system for its members, um, he also uses satire to point out the hypocrisies and weakness of, um, of its attitudes and institutions. And the second symbol is uh, the treasure. Finding treasure is a fanciful notion appropriate to Tom's romantic boyhood imagination. Yet this unrealistic dream uh, nonetheless uh, comes true by the novel's end. Tom and Huck achieve maturity uh, with the windfall of their treasure which heralds uh, the onset of their uh, adulthood in the eyes of society for they have achieved uh, wealth and status. The other uh, theme is storms. Uh, incidences of bad weather occur several times in the novel, each time uh, signifying that Tom is in particularly troubled um, psychological state. On Jackson's Island, uh, the homesick boys survive a storm that wreaks considerable damage on their ill-prepared uh, campsite. When um, Becky is away for the summer and his friends are swept up in religious uh, revivalism. Uh, a lonely Tom hides under his sheets during a storm that he imagines uh, is meant to destroy him. And the other 
symbol is the cave. In the harrowing experience of surviving several days, lost in McDougall's uh, cave, Tom proves his manhood. So, like the island, the cave involves physical isolation from the village community. While Tom runs away to the island with dreams of personal glory as an outlaw, in the cave he acts wisely and resourcefully as Becky's male protector. Twain describes the experience in a realistic, uh, unromantic style that speaks for the seriousness required of the adult behavior uh, Tom performs in rescuing Becky. And the island is the last theme here. Tom, Huck and Joe Harper escape to Jackson's Island to live as outlaws, leaving behind the rules and uh, strictures of St. Uh, Petersburg society. Its physical isolation brings them uh, all the freedom they could hope for. Yet Joe and Tom, uh, they find that they are not happy, they miss the social attachments and responsibilities to others that define their lives in the village. So uh, I hope that you make some notes about symbols too. And here we have two uh, analysis of two quotes. The first quote is here. You can pause the video and read the quote. Then I will explain the meaning. So, sorry that I didn't write the chapter number, it's from chapter 24. The community's assessment of Tom in chapter 24, after his testimony against Injun Joe, implicitly acknowledges the close relationship between Tom's uh, misbehavior and his heroism. If Tom had not sneaked out at night to Carol's in the cemetery with Hawk, he would never have been present to witness uh, Dr. Robinson's murder, as by all rights he should not have been. Tom's consistently bold and risky behavior puts him uh, in the position to save the day, distinguishing himself from the conventional run-of-the-mile behavior that is accepted as the standard in his community is an achievement that cuts both ways, as it makes Tom exceptional in both the good and the bad sense. An extreme character like um, his is bound to lead either to greatness or to ignominy. As the town puts it, he either will become president or hang. And the quote too, it's too long, to pause the video and read it carefully. So again, I forgot about the writing, the chapter number here, it's from the chapter 35. So this passage from the chapter 35 is perhaps the clearest description of the way Hogg's life changes after the widow Douglas takes him in. Though Told by the narrator rather than by Huck himself, the passage nevertheless renders the situation as it appears through Huck's eyes. This technique rendering a limited, childish point of view, as though uh, it were objective, is one Twain uses throughout the novel to help us identify with the boys more than with the adults of the town. Much of the force of Twain's uh, heavily nostalgic narrative comes from the way it talks at the memories most adult readers have stored away, however deeply, of what it was like to be a child, and we are thus able to view the events of the novel from a double perspective from a child's point of view and from a wider perspective that sees the limitations of that view and most likely its charm as well. The ordinary quality of the things the widow Douglas compels Huck to do uh, is meant to shock us out of our own assumptions. We realize uh, afresh uh, how an orthodox Huck's life has actually been. 
and this realization in turn forces us to contemplate more intensely the way a life of normalcy could feel like a prison after a life of such radical freedom. So this is the end of our uh, video lesson and I hope that you liked it. For the um, for seminar you should um, learn uh, the notes that you made during our video lesson and try to um, try to uh, remember all the um, themes, symbols and also analysis of characters because I will make uh, the questions for your exam so it will be he helpful for you to to be able to find the correct answer on your multiple choice tests like questions so um, thanks for watching bye